How's it going guys? It's a final render here. A lot of you guys have been asking for a quick tutorial on how to use the creation kit for Fallout 4. And I've had lots of people ask me, mostly subscribers, but I've also had some other YouTubers ask me, including I Am Petard, who has actually done the Craftardia series on Fallout 4. And his videos actually inspired me to make Fallout 4 building videos, so... Since he's asked me to do this tutorial, I think, you know what, I really can't hold off on it anymore. Let's make this tutorial for you guys. It'll be good. It'll be good fun. Completely unplanned, completely unscripted, but let's go for it. So let's say you've got yourself the creation kit. I'm sure you're very happy. But as you could probably tell, it's a little more complicated than most people think. They think they can just jump into it and start building stuff, but it's a little daunting when you first look at it. But it's actually simpler than you think. So, to start off with, we have got to open the Fallout game world, haven't we? So, to do that, we will go up to that file button there, and we can see lots and lots of files. These are basically all of the mods and all of the expansion packs I have got for Fallout 4. So as you can see, Fallout 4 is there, DLC Robot, that's the Automatron DLC, Workshop, Wasteland Workshop, DLC Coast, that's Far Harbor, etc. And the rest of them are all mods, so that you'll be able to pick and choose which mods you want to also edit inside the game. But we're not going to be doing that for this video, we're just going to be editing default Fallout Vanilla. So if you double click on Fallout 4 ESM, that is the main Fallout 4 file. And you've got to make sure you hit set as active file. That is That basically means that's the one we want to work on, that's our main kind of base structure. So do that and hit OK. It's pretty important to note as well that the creation kit is slow. It is a very slow program. If you think about it, it is basically getting everything in Fallout 4 and making it editable. So it is a very slow program to use, but you know what? It's worth it in the end. Trust me. As you can see down there, it's loading the files. It's on 23%, but it actually has frozen now. But just trust me, wait for it, and it'll kick in eventually. So okay, all of the data has been loaded. That took about 30 to 40 seconds to all load up. And now, all the items from Fallout 4 are currently loaded into the creation kit. Everything that you can find in Fallout 4, whether if it's vanilla or whether if it's modded in, if you selected it, you can find it in the creation kit now. But we actually need something to actually edit, don't we? So we are going to go down to here to the cell view window. This is where we actually choose where we are going to be editing. So we've got the interiors, recent cells. We haven't actually done anything with it yet, so there won't be anything in there. Commonwealth, Diamond City, Good Neighbor, you get the drift. So what we're going to do, we're going to select Commonwealth. And the Commonwealth is basically everything that is outside. Now as you can see, it is actually given us all the names of certain places, such as Andrew Station Exterior, Abernathy Farm Exterior Number 2, etc. So this is where you would actually choose where you want to edit. And obviously you can do the same for the interior cells as well. So what have we got there? Back Back Bay Tall Office number one. Well, that's definitely my favorite place. So let's go back to Commonwealth. Okay, so as you can see here, we have found the Sanctuary Exterior cell. So we are going to double click on that. And again, it's gonna take a long time to load it because it is pretty big area. And you'll probably think it's crashed, but trust me, just don't touch it and it'll eventually load it into our render window. So let's wait for it to load. Okay, there we go. So the cell is now loaded in the render window. Now, I actually don't need this cell view anymore, so I'm going to move that. All of these windows you can adjust, and I always recommend having a large render window so you can see what you're doing. And okay, so here we are inside Sanctuary Hills. Now, if you're familiar with any kind of 3D modeling programs, you'll probably know what you're doing here, but you've kind of got a gist of how it all works. But if you don't, it can be a bit daunting. So, to control inside the view, it's a bit confusing. So, use your mouse wheel to scroll in and out. That's how you zoom in and out. If you hold shift, you can tilt the camera around so you can look around. And also, if you hold down the mouse button, you can shift up and down and side to side. So, that's how you basically move around. It'll take some time to get used to, but eventually you'll have it down, no problem. So, let's actually start doing some stuff with the creation kit. We're just going to do some very basic stuff. We're going to add some items, remove some items, and also Petard asked me about terraforming the land. So that's something we're going to do. I've only done that once, but we'll give it a go in this video as well. So, deleting stuff, it's very simple. You can just click on it there, and then you can hit delete, and it's gone. 
it's vanished. And it's that simple. You know, you can literally just click on the things you don't want and hit delete. You might get warnings coming up. I don't know what these warnings mean, but I haven't had anything that has actually caused problems. But basically, it will mean something like if you delete a cabinet, for example, it will tell you the items inside will be missing. Are you sure? That kind of stuff. So now we know how to delete stuff, we can just click on it and hit delete and it's gone. Let's actually talk about adding some stuff. So if you look to here, the object window, and this is where we will find all of the items we want to use that are in Fallout 4. So to start off with, you're just going to actually type in the things you want, basically. Keep in mind, it is very case sensitive. So if it doesn't pop up, doesn't mean it's not there. You might have just spelt it wrong or not spelt it the way it is spelled inside the game. So let's go to all just so that we can find it easier. If you want to, you can go into subcategories such as containers. Obviously, that's things like cabinets and stuff. Doors are obviously doors. Flora, obviously flora, plants, etc. Furniture, all your chairs and stuff, grass, lights, movable static, etc. For the most part, you're probably going to be adding static items, which is just normal items which you can find around the world. So let's do that now. Let's say we just want to add any old random item. How about some load screen art? So all this is all of the static items that you can see during the loading screens. So let's see what we got. Creature death claw push forward. We can just click on it, drag it into the world, and there it is. There is the death claw that you can see in the loading screens. And it is a static object, meaning this is not a real death claw. This is a pretend death claw. It is just a statue, pretty much. And then we can do that for other items as well. Let's go into props. Let's see what we can find. We have got a daisy rug. I'm sure we're all familiar with those. And there's the daisy rug. There we go. You just added something into the game. Congratulations. But now, obviously, we need to manipulate it and get it to the way we want. So. Let's say we'll get our daisy rug, click on it, and let's say I want to move it to somewhere else. To do that, you click on it as I just did, hit E, and then you will get your X, Y, and Z axis markers. And these are what you use to move the items in the game. So we can just click on one of the axes and drag it, and then it will move into place. And obviously, that's all well and good, but we might need to rotate it as well. So to do that, while you've clicked on it, you can hit W, and now we get this rotation ball. So in order to manipulate the rotation ball, you just click on the axis you want, and then drag it again. And you can start to rotate them on all the axes you want. And you just basically go back and forth between W for rotate and E to move back and forth until you get something which is fairly good. And we can do the same for our old death claw up here. We can drag him on top of the rug, lower him down, and there we have got a death claw standing on a rug. Definitely a piece of modern art right there. And we can rotate it a bit as well. There we go. There is our death claw right there. But obviously, that's all well and good. But what if you want to do some other things? What if you want to scale things, for example? Well, to do that, you can click on your item and hit 2 on the keyboard. And then you will get the same scale markers. So you can make things bigger and larger. I don't know if there's a way to scale individual axes. If there is a way, please let me know because that would actually be quite useful for me. And you can change the size of things that way. So you can hit 2, scale it up and down as much as you want. Brilliant. And then you go back and forwards between 2, E and W to get exactly what you want. So there we go. Now we've got a smaller death claw on a rug. Superb, superb. And really, that's just about the main basics of how you add items, pretty much. There are some other things, like you have got items like this, which is a snap to grid, so that if you move things around, it will snap to various grid points. So as you can see, it's just kind of jumping around from grid point to grid point. We have got snap to angle, which can be very useful if you are rotating items. It will rotate things at a 45 degree. So rather than rotating things very very finely you can just quickly rotate it 45 degrees and then when it's roughly in the right position you can turn it off and then rotate it just to do those fine little tweaks so to speak so that's all well and good something that Peter specifically requested with this video as well is how do I terraform that is a very good question and we're going to answer it here I've only done this once so if anyone is very seasoned with the creation kit and I do this wrong I apologize but this is how I did it the one time I tried it so if you go up there and go to landscape editing and click on that, 
we get this new window appearing. And this is what we're going to use to edit the landscape. So while this is open, if we click on the area we want to edit and then drag up, we get a hill. And if we drag down, we get a ditch. So that if we want to, we can start to terraform the landscape to make what we want. And we've got some other things we can do with it as well, such as edit the radius. This is how wide our little selection tool is, so to speak. So if you click a wider one, you will get a bigger hill or a bigger ditch, etc. And you can start to play with it like that, so you can start to make your own landscape with it. So how about we have it on two and go to one, and in the middle of this hill, have a ditch. There we go. That kind of looks like almost kind of like a bomb hit it, so to speak. So that's how you do the terraforming. I'm sure there's much more to it than what I just showed, but that's how I did it when I first tried out as a quick experiment. So now you've actually done and edited your cell a little bit, you're happy with it, and you want to actually start using it in game. So how would you do that? Well, to do that, it's actually very simple. What you would do is you would select file and hit save, and then it takes you to your Fallout 4 data folder. And then what you'll do is you'll give it a name. Let's call it Sanctuary Tutorial. If I can spell, let's call it Tut because that's easy to spell. Okay, so, and then hit save. And it's that simple. So now that that's done, in order to actually use it, what we will do, we will go into our Nexus Mod Manager. So it won't actually appear here. You've got to go to your plugins and it'll be right at the bottom. There it is, Sanctuary Tut, click it, and then we can actually go and launch Fallout 4. Okay, here we are in Sanctuary Hills in Fallout 4. It's actually running a little slowly right now because I've still got the creation kit open. But as you can see, here is our Deathclaw from the loading screen, standing on the daisy rug. So he's in the game now, he actually exists. You know, he doesn't have any collision because it is just a statue. But you know what, that's in the game. And now we can also see here that the little bit of land we terraformed actually is in the game. And that's the very basics of the creation kit people. So as I said, I learned all this just by messing around with it. So I apologize if I've done anything very wrong in the eyes of prof more professional modders, so to speak. But you know, I'm still learning with it. I'm enjoying it so far, if I'm totally honest. And as I said, you know, it's actually pretty simple when you start to get the gist of it. You know, you just learn some basic keystrokes, etc and you can actually start to make some pretty good stuff and I actually really like it. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video as well. I hope that you can give me some advice if you are more seasoned with the creation kit and if you're not maybe you can actually start to learn how to use it yourself. So thank you very much for watching guys. This has been the final render and you have been the audience. I've got a new episode of Fallout 4 Building with Mods coming out soon and I hope you'll tune in for that. See you around.